and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is the 36A Austin A50. Introduced in 1957, the A50 lasted until 1961 when it was replaced by the Lambretta scooter and sidecar. The model I have in my hands here has a bit of a fatal flaw. It's missing the base of the slot where the tongue fits in and that is the result. It's a sort of anti-hot rod stance. So that will need fixing. This will be the first time I've attempted to fix a structural problem with a model which I've not caused myself. So I'll have to fabricate the parts and fit them. Other than that, this model's not in terrible condition. The paintwork just needs a bit of a tidy up and the wheels are a little rusty around the crimped ends and the rounded ends as well. There are many shades of blue slash green to be found on the A50. Early issues were a greenish blue to turquoise and the later models were a pale shade of blue. What I'll do first is remove those wheels from the axles so I can remove the base, drill into the rivet post and tap the post. So silver trim was added to the front and rear bumpers, the grill and the headlights on this model. Red trim was applied to the rear, however Lesney incorrectly applied this to the top of the rear wings. In reality the tail lights were much lower and more central. The model originally had a smooth interior of the roof but pips were later added in groups of 2 and 6 to the roof line. Now for the caustic soda. Quite a tidy little model, I'm quite keen on the styling. I do like these early series models, they're very characterful. And here's the base, um, as this model had such a clean brake I had no idea that it originally had a tow hook. It was so completely smooth. So I'd already started painting the base a new coat of black by the time I'd realised that it actually was meant to have one so I, couldn't, I didn't have the time then to fabricate a new one. So here I'm just polishing up all of the parts. I'm just giving the exterior and the base, any exposed areas, a brush up with the wire brush. And there's the base. You can see the clean break there at the end. It's ever so subtle where the tow hook would have sat. There's a couple of casting lines across the headlights that I wanted to get rid of. So I just gently go over those with a metal file and smooth them off a little bit. Not a great deal. Here I can apply some primer to that base. Here I'm just trying to size up the parts. So I've used a split pin here and taped off the end and just slightly adjusting it so I know where to cut. I'll cut a little bit too much off then I can grind it down. So here I use the grinding bit in my rotary tool. And cut away at it and it's gone. So after searching for that I can apply some of the standard Tamiya TS14 black to the base. You can see the clean break there as well as the lettering standing out. As I said before, I've cut a bit too much there, so I'll just have to file that down just so it fits. But it looks like it's going to be pretty seamless. So the Austin A50 is a variant of Austin's Cambridge series of cars. The A40 and A50 were launched alongside each other in 1954. Each had an identical body style. The A50 carried a 1.5 litre four cylinder engine while the A40 was powered by a 1.2 straight four. So here I'm just popping on some sodium bicarb to the super glue to make that set a little bit quicker. And once that's set, which won't take long, I can file down the jelly like remnants. The A40 dropped out of production in 1956 and a two door saloon never made it to fruition. As the A50 was the better seller, it remained in production until 1957 when it was replaced by the A55, also in the matchbox range at number 29B. So here I've applied some model filler just to tidy up those gaps and then I can file away at that once that's also dried, just to give it the perfect smooth finish. Once that's dried off, I'm really quite happy with the result. I've tested the tongue once that black paint had dried 
just to make sure I'd set it at the right sort of level. There's a bit of a gap on the interior, but I'm not too fussed about that as you can't really see it, but it's certainly firm and strong. After brushing up the wheels with some warm soapy water, I move on to giving the model a coat of primer, which will really be the acid test for my repairs on the front. This is the light grey Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. I put on quite a thick coat as the lines are very defined on this one anyway. And I just wanted to make sure I covered all of the imperfections. But it's turned out pretty well. Here's a shot prior to painting. Very smooth finish. I'm quite pleased with myself. The paint chosen for this one is the Tamiya TS41 Coral Blue. I've used this a couple of times before. The first was on the 56B Fiat 1500. And then the second was on the 12C Land Rover Safari. After one coat, it's fairly smooth, but there's a few air bubbles on the surface there. So I did have to go back and sort those out. But after a few coats, it seemed to smooth out nicely. So with the crimped axles, I thought I'd give a new technique a go, which I'd seen a recommendation for using a grip wrench or a vice grip, or locking wrench, or locking grips, or I've seen a million and one different names for them, but they do a really authentic job at recreating the crimped ends of the axles. After just a bit of filing down, they look really nice. The ends of the axles then get a spot of chrome paint. You can see the pips on the interior there. I'm just about to test out my new slot to make sure it works. Fits in there very snugly. And I'm quite pleased with the outcome there. I'm still a bit noticeable on the base, but this is my first go at giving this kind of restoration a go. And I'm quite confident moving forward now. And I'll fill in the details. I was a little bit unsure about using chrome for this one actually. The lights are a bit too bulbous for the chrome paint, so I may just go back at some point and give it silver paint instead. I think the chrome looks really good on bumpers, especially this rear bumper, but I'm not so convinced with things like the lights. Anyway, this is what I started off with today. The damaged Austin A50 with that missing slot at the bottom for the tongue and just generally pretty grubby and unloved. That paintwork was looking a bit bleak. Couldn't match it perfectly, but I just went with something that I had in hand, but in a color that the original could have been found as. And I repainted all of the details using the chrome paint pen. And I sorted out the casting markings on the front end, just to tidy it up a little bit. So you could say this little lost in A50 is a bit slack jawed, and now it is jaw dropping. A new coat of paint, of course, but most importantly, the new slot base, so the tongue for the base can fit back in. A new technique for crimping the axles that I think has worked really quite well. It's chromed up bumpers. I neglected painting the red for the rear brake lights mainly because it wasn't correct as original. And I didn't really want to just plop some red paint on the back where it would have been. Anyway, remember to hit that subscribe button for all the latest up to date information. Please like, share and subscribe and I will catch you again for the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.